Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Keep It Moving Podcast. I am your host, Novelty, and joining me as always is this man. He a man today. He might be a boy tomorrow. We'll see. I have no idea who you're talking about. You! I, I'm, I might be a boy. To, what is that all about? I don't know. It just depends on the mood I'm, I'm in. Oh, okay. Uh, what it do? Because I'm all, I mean, you talk about me. I'm old. I'm this. I'm that. I get to talk about you. I talk about you like that on the show. You talk about me on the show. You talk about me off the show. You talk about me when you're talking to me. You talk about me when you're not talking to me in my face, behind my back. You know, you talk about me. You think so? I know so. So I got a lot of time to talk about you. Evidently. And I'm trying to figure out why. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. Anywho. What's up? Not much. How'd your week go? Uh, besides the fact that it's like super hot. Well, today is actually nice. But this week has been so hot. Like you don't even want to step outside. Like just hell is just waiting for you. <laughs> that's that's, <laughs> that's how it's been feeling outside, which is why I rarely leave my house. But it's it's been scorching to me. I know you've been able to manage considering you work from home. You don't have to leave too often. I don't leave my house. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Actually, I, I get up in the morning. I go to the gym. And um, what, I think it was Thursday, which was the hottest day. Um, I was walking into the gym, you know, and they talk about me because when I walk in, come into the gym, I look like I've been through a gym like 12 times because I'm just dragging and I'm tired and it's oh, okay. early in the morning. I don't want to go to the gym. It's a, it's a struggle for me to go in. Yeah, I yeah. get myself to go in. That's good. But anywho, so um, I went into the gym and this guy comes in and he says, do you know by 10 o'clock it's going to be 100 degrees? It's like when I leave from here, I ain't leaving my house. <laughs> and it was Thursday because I don't go to the gym on Fridays. I work out at home. So I was like, I'm not leaving my house. And to be true, truthfully honest, I won't leave my house for the next two days. That's how I <laughs> like, be. Like, hey, I'm, it's hot out there. Why? To get things done. To see people, I guess. <laughs> I see people. I see people on the weekends. I do it early in the morning if it's going to be hot. But my buddies is a nice, cool place this by is the, the time it gets hot. Yeah, this is the weather to make you totally reevaluate your plans. Like, do I need to do this? Re- makes do me they reevaluate need, my life? Do I need to eat today? Because I, I feel like, you know, I could, you know, miss a couple meals and I'll be all right. It's that kind of heat. Uh, uh, miss a couple of meals. Forget it. I'm not leaving. Uh, but other but than then, that, I you mean, know. See, I stock my, fr- my, fr- my. Your three deep freezers. My freezers up. Why you you want to tell them why you got so many freezers? Okay, see, was it accident? <laughs> okay, accident. Okay, so the first one I got a little like five foot cubic front door freezer. My aunt bought years ago. It had to be like 10, 15 years ago. She bought one for me. She bought one for her. Um, just to keep extras to stuff in. But it's small, so it didn't hold that much. So I decided when I decided I was gonna finally be an adult and start cooking, which was probably maybe two years ago. Um, I decided I wanted a bigger freezer that way because I'm good for cooking like for 20 people instead of just one. Mm-hmm. And I can't help be, it. Uh, okay. You don't know why you do that. I, I, well, it used to be because when I was little, I would cook for my brothers, and my brother and sister and my mom. I would cook. Yeah. But now that I'm older and I'm, I don't have a brother and a sister in my house. It's just me. I found that I would cook for the week. Oh, but yeah. I was tired of be eating the same thing all week long. That finally, after 20-something years, has gotten old. So I said, okay, well, I'll go ahead and cook like I normally do, but I'm going to start freezing stuff and have making my own little TV dinners. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I did. I started cooking. I went out and got, got a freezer, and now I got lasagna in the freezer. I got my taco lasagna in there. I've got chili. I've got red beans. And, you know, I even make rice, roll it up, freeze it. Pop it in the microwave for three minutes. That rice tastes like it came right out of one of those rice cookers. Oh, really? Yeah, it's real good. So if you ever have to store rice, don't ever store it in a, fr- in a refrigerator, in a pot or a dish. Put them in Ziploc bags, single, um, single servings in Ziploc bags. Roll them up, stick them in the freezer. When you're ready to eat them, pop them out, stick them in the microwave. It's something about the way the water melts it back into the rice. To add moisture back to it. Yeah, so anywho. But... So I was good. And then one day I noticed my little freezer, which now is loaded with like 
ice cream and cakes and <laughs> stuff like that. I just turned it into a dessert freezer. That way, if I want a piece of cake, I don't have to go and make a big old cake for myself. So um, my little dessert freezer, I noticed that it wasn't seeming to seal. And I could see ice. And I was like, what's going on here? And I'm looking at it. I done looked at the door in every which way but Sunday and trying to figure out why it's not closing. Everything looks right. I look inside. Everything looks right. And so I'm thinking the freezer's broken. So I call. Um, I got it from Sears. It's a Kenmore. So I call Sears to ask them to um, to get a new seal. So I was just going to replace the seal. I'm like, okay, this is the first time I've ever had to do this. But it's got to be a YouTube video out there. Found 50 million YouTube videos to do it. And like I was gonna do it but they couldn't find the part and it was a whole big rigmarole with the part I didn't I had to get the customer customer service out as usual (laughs) hey I told them I wanted to return the part because they gave me the wrong part they didn't want to give me my money back they didn't well they they said they would do it but they kept claiming that they were sending me an email that wasn't falling in my spam wasn't falling in my email I finally had to tell them look y'all this is theft y'all done sold me something I told you I didn't want you, you sold me the wrong part. You don't want to give me my money back. This is theft. And if you don't do <laughs> y'all, something about y'all it. Y'all stealing from me. <laughs> that's what I told him. You stealing from me. And I, the moment I said stealing, it was a supervisor on the line. And I, I, I had that one little piece of paper emailed to me within 10 seconds. The moment what, I said stealing. What was taking so long? That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Okay. Because it had been weeks. They playing. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So you see why was people was getting cussed out. But anywho. So, but you know, can I just say that sounds like an old person argument? Y'all stealing from me. <laughs> what I just say about you talking oh, about? Oh, me. yeah, my bad, my bad. <laughs> so, um, so finally, um, they get we get it straight with the get my money back and my freezer's just gone. I called this old repair store and the guy I asked him I said, "Is there anything else you can do to get the door to seal?" And he said, "Well, tell me this: when you shut it, does it seal?" I said. No, he said. Well, then there's nothing else you can do. I was like, that sounds like some bootleg cousin. I was, I was <laughs> so mad at him. I'm like, you just don't know, dude. And so I, I finally said, okay, fine. I'm gonna just have to buy another one. So I'm looking all over. I cannot find a five cubic foot freezer, like not like with the a one front door. Okay, not with like top anywhere. access. I keep finding top access. So I finally just said, forget it. I have to have another one. Otherwise, I got a freezer full of food that's about to spoil, and it ain't no way I can sit here and eat it all. And you I'm gonna have a party. Waste this money. No, 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 no. And I wasn't getting ready to waste all that money. I had all kind of ice cream in there and cakes and cookies. (laughs) I think you just didn't want to waste those desserts. Of course not. And (laughs) I I had my bean pie in there. You know I didn't want to waste that. Have we talked about your bean pie? I I think we have. I think we have, and it's good. I don't care what you say. Anywho, so um, I got the freezer in there. I got it hooked up. And I pu- pulled my little freezer into the um, kitchen because I didn't want to do it in the dining room. I got hardwood floors. So I pull it into the kitchen and I have to use an ice pick to get into it because the door is sealed, frozen. Uh-huh. And so finally I get into it and I open it up and I pull some of the stuff out and put it in the little uh, t- my um, refrigerator freezer just to kind of get it out of the way. And. I, I say to myself, ooh, I probably should wait and do this after the freezer, the other freezer is frozen, so I can just move that stuff there because yeah. all this is not going to fit in the little freezer here. So I'm like, okay, I go to shut the door. The door won't shut. I'm like, now I just opened this door. Why is it shut? <laughs> I, when you talk about confused, now I'm really just twisted confused. And something said, don't just open the door and look down. Step back and look completely inside. I looked completely inside. There had to be a good five inches of ice from the top coming down. Mm -hmm. The door couldn't shut because the ice was in the way. And I'm thinking, and I looked to the side because my new freezer came with with an ice scraper. And it told me I had to defrost. (laughs) And I got to thinking, do I need to defrost this freezer? So I just sat there. I called my auntie and I asked her, I said, "Um, have you ever defrosted your little freezer? She said, yeah, you do that sometimes. You have to do that occasionally. I'm like, really? She said, yeah. Like, yeah. As soon as the ice was gone, that freezer door shut, it's sealed. Now I got three freezers. It don't make no sense. 
I would have took the second, well, the one you just purchased. I would have took that one back. I had, well, I ordered it online, so I would have had to mail it back, and I would have had to get it. They could have scheduled like, for a pickup, right? Yeah, I went. I, I don't know. I just, you just all wanted I knew was another I would, freezer. I need no. Now I didn't need another freezer, but I wanted to get a um a stand up freezer, but I wanted to get like a six footer. I didn't want the five cubic foot anymore. I wanted to just get a bigger freezer. Could you consider yourself like a food hoarder? Hey, if the world <laughs> ends tomorrow, I got enough food to last. And for I, I guess I know where to go. Yeah, I got a, enough food to last at least for a month. It's certain, like I said, it's hot outside. I'm not going outside. I don't have no reason to leave my house if I don't want to. Right on. That's what it's about. So, but anyway, did you do anything else this weekend? Nope. I mean, I, usually on when I park on Fridays, my car don't move again until Sunday. I'm just, I'm in the house doing something. Where this is like watching Netflix, playing we a video old. game. We might as well both accept that we are old. Because yes. what? Because you part, you only go to work, come home. But it's work, not. I don't home. think it's because I'm old. I just even. I just don't want to do. You <laughs> do old? <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe so. Well, last week was the last week, the fifth, the day after the fourth. Uh huh. I went to see BBD. Uh, BB. Bell 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 Yes. Okay. So I had a good time bouncing around like a sixteen-year-old. Where were they at? It's the Sprint Center. Okay. Uh, who was there with them? Oh, that where you sent me the picture from Escape? Yes. You saw Escape there or Escape something like that? and uh, SWV. Okay. Was it was it a good concert? Bill Biff DeVoe was. You didn't like the others? Uh, you know, the voices are there. Uh, they both sound really good. Oh, you had an issue with the booty. Uh, no, that, the yeah, that was that a lot wearing. of booty for them outfits. That was a lot of booty, and they, you know, they got the, they got these uh, spanks, and they kind of the spanks kind of move the fat where in the, into the booty. And you said, I, you I told need, me. I said, I need <laughs> them kind of spanks to move my fat into the booty because I don't have no booty because it was a lot of booty on that stage. But no, um, what I really was upset about is you can tell that they haven't performed in a long time but it was like nobody said hey you know what we need to rehearse it was like you don't, rehearsal think, you don't think they've been rehearsing there. if they have they they, but, they ain't been rehearsing with the right people okay because i feel like they've been trainers. we've been hearing about them at least for the past year uh then they come out of like essence festival last year or something they like need that better trainers oh then if that's the case they need better trainers because i'm just putting it up today ain't been rehearsing at all it doesn't SWB look like okay. wasn't on the stage but for one song and they they all look tired after one song, I'm like, see, you're not supposed to look tired after one song. Yeah, you're supposed to get the crowd hype and, you know, yeah. be energetic and mm-hmm. get people back into your music. Escape came out and they did one song and then they left the stage and one of their daughters came up and did a set of, of, of her own or a song of her own. I'm like, who is this girl? And she's a rapper. So this is a oh, a uh, 90s show. And you guys was it three members or four members four of Escape? Four members of Escape. So uh, Candy Burrs, that may have been no, no, it wasn't her daughter. Tiny's daughter. No, it wasn't Tiny's daughter. It wasn't Zani? I don't know the other two girl by, girls by name. But one is one Tasha, I think. Tasha okay. something. Yeah, I don't, yeah, well, no, it wasn't Tasha then. It was the third girl, because I do know Tasha. Okay. Tasha's the one that does all the... Aren't they sisters? Yeah, she does all the runs and embellishments. Runs and yeah. stuff. So, so it's the other girl. I mean, she's a beautiful girl. Don't get me wrong. Little girl is beautiful. It may be really talented. It was just she put her song in the middle of a set and it just did and i'm they did one song and then she introduced her daughter and they walked off stage and you don't know who it was i don't know i don't know her name it was the fourth <laughs> girl you we named three and it was the only one left <laughs> all right i'm good to know the two the, the th- two and three that i do know and you said she was a rapper yeah her daughter was a rapper okay did she do good she, she did i right. okay you don't seem like you enjoyed it no, I didn't, cause okay. I I came to see <laughs> SWV, BBD, and Escape. Not this little girl. Oh, that's, that's now it, you they, ain't hating, are you? No, she should have been at the beginning of the show. Okay, she should have been the opening act. For okay, I can see that. Not in the middle of their set. And that's then they the came thing. back. Yeah, and then they had a DJ who didn't know his audience. He, he, you know, they nowadays see back when in the nineties when we were coming up, they had an opening act. Nowadays, what they do is they bring a DJ with them. Lo- they could grab a local opening act, get them up on stage for free nine times out of ten. Because mm-hmm. they, they want that exposure or whatever. Plus, right. they know the city. They know the crowd. And so, they yeah. can get the crowd hyped up, and boom, the show goes into effect. Yeah. And that's it. If you had a DJ, it was a, the local radio DJ who came up, and he kind of emceed the show, and they played a little music between the sets. That's it. Well, they brought their own DJ. 
And when you don't know the city, it's harder to DJ and hype the city up. And then the second part is he did it with music, but like he did it with with music from kids that are 18, 19 years old. These 18, 19 year olds are not coming to see SWB, <laughs> BBD, and, and Escape. escape. And, uh, I mean, so it's more like the the lo- uh, newer rappers. Uh, that's the kind of music he was right, playing. Right, that's the kind of music he was playing. And finally he started going in. He realized, okay, he started going into set, um, decades. And he was like, okay, I'm playing this for people in the, who's in their 20s, people in their 30s, people in their 40s. And that's when the where the noise was. He pe- Keith sweating. We was like, oh, hey, okay, he finally on it. And then now he go back sense. to somebody in his 20s. It's like, are you kidding me? Get off the stage. You were over it. I was, I was way over it. And come to find out, he's escaped DJ because he DJed their show. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh, my God. So the um, they did one song. Then the girl came out. The girl's daughter came out. She did a song. Then the DJ came out, and he DJed. And I'm looking at my best friend going, what is going on? She said they changed the <laughs> clothes. I'm like, got to get all that booty in the clothes, <laughs> you know? And then they would come out, and they change, They did. They changed clothes and put on white robes. I'm like, it took that long to put on some white robes. What is going But they, you know, here? they may have been hurting from being squished and whatever. They were whatever. still squished oh. because then they took off the white robes and had the same outfits on. They were squished in. Okay. Or maybe they was different spanky outfits, but it don't matter. They were squished in the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm just like, this is, the, and all I could think of is these poor women have been out of the game for so long, and they're trying to do some of the things that they did when they were young, some of the things that these new kids are doing mm-hmm. now, just to try to stay relevant, but nobody rehearsed. And so they they literally I, had. I just I refuse to believe that they're not rehearsing. It they just had intermission come off like in the middle of their show, dude. In the middle of their show, after doing one song, they had intermission. <laughs> It was intermission. <laughs> I mean, I had enough time to go to the bathroom. And How long come was that back. first song? It had to be like maybe 30 minutes. No. <laughs> it was a first song, three, four minutes tops. And like I said, even with SWV, when they got on stage, what song they did they did sing? one song. <clears throat> I understand. No, who sing? That's Escape. That's they Escape. They sang that song. Uh, SWV, SWV song is weak. weak. Yeah. yeah, they did them all. I mean, SWV did like four or five songs. I thought you said That's they it. did one song. No, I said they did one song and then they took a break. I didn't say oh, they just. Oh, I didn't did hear one. the break part. Yeah, they did okay. one song. Then the little girl came out. Then the DJ came out and did intermission. Then Candy came out and did a no, song. No, SWV. SWV did like four or five songs. I said after one song, they was tired. Okay. We we, we came in when the first song started playing because we were running a little late. So we came in when they first started um, playing the first song. We got in there at the end of that song. They went to song two, and two of them looked like they was about to pass out. <laughs> I was like, the poor babies can't last for one song. And they used to have a TV show. Rehearsal. Mm. I wonder what made them bring the, uh, put the band back together again. They need some money. Oh, right on. They broke. It was money and touring. But you could tell BBD had been, re- you can tell they've been touring for as long as they have because they've, pretty much been touring for the last five ten years not stop and you can tell because they dj came in immediately hyped the crowd up they they had they set they had they show they ran they show they was playing with the crowd you could tell i mean it was a show the other two but they were the headliners though right no who was the headline sw i mean escape oh yeah so it was an escape concert where bbd was there and swv was there Mm mm-hmm SWV opened, BBD was second, and then escaped. And it shouldn't have been that way. Quite frankly, it should have been BBD headlining, but escape, I believe, is the one who put the tour together. So, of course, they want to be the headliners, but like you have to tell every musician, just because you want to be the headliner don't mean you can be the headliner. Especially if you're not going to put, like, rehearse and take this thing <laughs> seriously. Rehearse. <laughs> I mean, I think that had they been able to put a, a do a show, per, per, do perform a show, they could have been a headliner because they have the catalog to do so. Right. But they've been out of the game so long. They haven't put a show together. Mm-mm. It was sad. It, it was pitiful. We left early. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was bad. It it was it was sad. Now all, all I could think of is they need new management. And at one time, um, not Candy, but Tasha's mic went out. And when her mic went out, she's singing, and of course she just keeps going. But nobody on the stage, you don't see anybody rush her out another mic. And I mean, for over half the song, her mic is out. 
how did they rectify that situation? Finally, um, whoever was running the sound system got it back up, but oh, okay. her mic was out. And all I'm thinking is, okay, somebody needs to be bringing her a mic. Why, why is everybody standing here? And all I'm thinking <laughs> is, everybody's fired. <laughs> like, if this was me, everybody would be fired. It ain't no way. And then it, it actually agitated me because Candy's mic was working. She had literally just stopped singing a song. The girls all joined her on stage, and then they started singing the other song, and Tasha went in. So Candy's mic was working. And I'm like, she needs to at least pass her mic down to her during this time. And I know that's hard. It's very hard for an artist to give up their mic because they really not supposed to. But when you are a unit, you, you got to do what's best. And I'm like, nobody's giving mics. I'm like, everybody's fired. Everybody. And my best friend, she's sitting there looking at me like, yeah, this is why I don't do concerts with you. <laughs> See, I've never been to a concert. Oh, I mean, not for that reason. I just don't like being around that many people. Back in the day, if a mic, if something happened with a mic, it was guaranteed whoever was they had another mic in their hand within seconds, and it took people that's running. What, I mean, from that's one why you the have theater. a stage manager, yeah, right? That's right. That's why all of that's there. I mean, people running from one end of the theater to the other, and this, that, and the third, and people running around back backstage. Fix it, fix it. Somebody better fix it. I mean, it was like they was just sitting there watching. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. They didn't, maybe they didn't take Kansas fired. City seriously. Like, we we don't care. It's, it's only Kansas City. Yeah, and that's why Kansas, uh, at least me, y'all only cared about BBD and we left. <laughs> so. Oh, that's sad. Anywho. I'm sorry to hear that, actually. So, you Miss Dark and, uh, uh, Dark and Lovely Anita, please tell your niece, come, come, come see me. We can hang out. She said her, she's got a, a niece, 45 years old, my age, see Oh, and she is in love with New Edition like me. We can hang out. <laughs> we can hang out. We can have a good time. <laughs> so I guess you have to be around that age to appreciate New Edition. Well, yeah, well, they were. Let's see. It was eighty three when they came out. I was thirteen. Yeah, right on. I I mean I like the songs, but uh, of course I don't I don't care. You're not a girl. We don't that's, expect that's, you to uh, care. That's true. <laughs> I mean, if you was fawning all over five guys or six guys at this point, I would have to question some yeah, things. That, there, I would be questioning myself. <laughs> and, you know, you got a bay for me today? Uh, thankfully, this week, and it's a new month, so uh, maybe this is why I do actually have <laughs> someone, a candidate for Black Achievements and Excellent this week. We are awarding to uh, a 22-year-old graduate from Richmond, Virginia. Her name is, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, is Janai Sebron, G I N A I. I would, Don't ask you know, me. or Janae, maybe it's Janae. But she is a, like I said, 22 year old uh, Richmond woman who cemented her place in history by becoming the state's first ever black female nanoscientist. And for those of you who what don't know like about nanoscience. nanoscience, that refers to the study, which I had to go to Google, the, nano. <laughs> the study, manipulation, and engineering of matter, particles, and structures on the nanometer scale, which is one millionth of a millimeter. Uh. And w- once I read what the study was, and I'm like, okay, finding out that she was the first ever black female nanoscientist, this one, ma- one kind of makes sense to me. You know, we'd be like, oh, uh, so-and-so got their first black mayor or the first black governor. It's like, why is this the first? The first black nanoscientist, How I can How long have we known it. about nanoscience? Okay. I, I, who, I had to read the definition. <laughs> now, I might have to do some research on this. <laughs> so, uh, so this one to me made sense. And she was saying, and which one, one of the reasons that I also appreciate this is because we're hearing about more black people going into STEM, uh, STEM fields, you know, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, I graduated with a degree from computer, uh, in computer science. Most of my friends from college, you know, we were all part of this uh, group called NSBE, NSBE, which is the National Society of Black Engineers. And when you get, they used to have like national conferences, and when you get around uh, a group of black people, black engineers, black scientists, oh, wow. people in technology. It just, it makes you mm. feel so good. And you, you're you reminded that we out here and we doing the damn thing for ourselves as well. So it's not something that's just- You need to be a part of that group. You, you, yes, you do. <laughs> you trying <laughs> to say I'm stupid? I'm not, I'm not trying to say you're stupid. Uh, but I've, you're, you're intelligent in your own right. And I've, I've given you your props oh, before. I like intelligent black men. That's why I need to be a oh, part of okay. that I group. I thought you wanted to like go back to school. And oh, I'm no, like, we no, just no. went through this. Not inside, <laughs> you're you're no. not ready for that I, again, I especially with your uh, student loan bill. No, don't get me started. They they messing with me already. Don't get me started. It's definitely going to increase going into the STEM fields. No, I'll just let you know that. You, I just uh, want to go to the conference. Right? Oh, <laughs> I, I, I get it now. 
Uh, but it, it it made you feel so good. So I am so I'm totally proud of Miss. I'm gonna call her Janae. Miss Janae. Janae Seabrom, Rich, Richmond, Virginia, 22 years old, nanoscientist. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> what say, women? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out why you shocked about my my yell still, but go ahead. Well, I was in the middle of uh, saying her name. I didn't expect it to, <laughs> to come right then, so that one kind of threw me off. Who else? What else you got? Oh, that's that. That's it. Oh, I just you said you had two. Nope. Okay, cool. She. Well, I said she was 22. Well, maybe. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to the show. Well, get to the. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk let's talk about these 12 indictments okay like i said now i've been posting if you haven't been following the the page keeping moving facebook i have um posted twice now about all these witches and warlocks that we done caught in this witch hunt and i think the last number the last count was like 32 people indicted and a hundred and ninety two different charges in this so-called witch hunt well, now 12 indictments were issued Friday of 12 Russians. So they are the, the um, Mueller investigation now is directly connecting Putin's administration to the. Um, I think they were for, for hacking in the, the hacking the DNC, right, right? Hacking the DNC and meddling in the, the 2016 uh, election. The election. But here's the thing. Remember back in 20, what was it? it was probably beginning of 2016 when um agent orange said that if russia was listening yeah please hack that, yeah <laughs> on that exact day or a few days from that day russia hacked they did they did exactly what he said now he could have been being sarcastic if you want to believe that, he could have just actually directed people to do it. If you want to believe that. But either way it goes, this is what I'm upset about. I don't care about Trump at this point and his reputation. I don't care about the election, the pat. I don't care about none of that. The Obama administration knowing about it. You can tell me everything you want to tell me right now about what happened then. What I'm ticked off about is what's happening right now. Okay, now the CIA and every intelligence agency has told you. But they've been saying that. Right. Has told you that they've meddled in the elections. The Mueller investigation is now indicting 12 people in the meddling of the elections. This ain't, I don't think this is the first group of Russians that have been indicted in this investigation. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, what I'm saying is. No, I'm saying in addition to. Right. This is in addition to all the other people prior to. Yeah. You, but yet you know this, but yet and still you still go out, say it's a witch hunt, and you are not doing anything to put any kind of protections in place for our next elections. You're not doing anything about it. So it's like basically you know that the enemy has been shooting us with BB guns in the butt. But he but was you he, he ain't benefited to from stop. it. I don't and care. they're benefiting from that. it. That's why he's not saying anything or doing anything. You are now no longer there protecting me. I don't care if if I believed everything he stood for, he has now put my life in jeopardy. If I believe everything you stand for, but you just leave me hanging in the wind when you're supposed to be the one protecting me, when you say, I no longer want you protecting me. Yeah, but when you say everything he stood for. Like, what is there to believe about what he no, stands for? No, if you are a Trump supporter okay. and you there believe you go. Okay. everything he stood for, at this point, yeah. it is now 100% clear that he is not protecting you. I need you out of there if you're not going to protect me. So if your your idea is of a good life is, okay, I don't want you to have abortion. I don't want you to have an abortion. This man is going to support the fact that I don't want you to have an abortion. But it, while he's supporting that, he's going to let the, Russia come in and kill me. You no longer the person I need in that position. <laughs> right. I, I get I don't want you to have an abortion, but I want to live, too. Right. You know, that's what and that's what I'm having the biggest problem with now. He's still saying everything he can instead of just saying, you know what? We need to deal with this. Let's accept the results and put things in place to make sure they cannot do it again. That's all I want. The, I feel like the only time he may have a conversation about that is after the primaries. Because I think he's still banking on Russia helping these Republicans who stand no chance, especially if the American people actually show up and show out this November. Because everybody's pissed off, except for, I guess, Republicans. 
because somehow they're still trying to, and I won't say all Republicans, but y'all all look the same to me right now, sure uh, especially if you're not speaking out against what he's doing and what he's about or trying to put up some legislation to stop him from ruining our democracy because it's benefiting them right now. No, and I, it's 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 sad and it pisses me off. But I, you know what it, what what can I do about it right now? I, I really don't care about Republicans. I don't care what you call yourself. This is what I care about: sixty five million eight hundred and fifty three thousand six hundred and twenty five Democrats voted in the last election. Sixty two thousand nine hundred and eighty five thousand one hundred and five Republicans voted in the last election. 108,856,312 people did not vote at all. And we're talking about eligible voters. Get up, get out, and do something. Say something. Don't just sit there and let this stuff keep happening. Because I guarantee you, you one of these people sitting here going, man, I don't like him. He need to shut up. He need to get off this. I don't have no money. I don't have no credit cards. I can't get a car. I can't get a home loan. You are in that boat and you're not doing anything to change your own story. Right. And that's what's pissing me off. That 108 million people, they are the ones that are pissing me off. And I'm willing to bet. 40 cent of them 40 percent of them are black yeah i said it maybe 60 because we do not get up and we do not vote yeah they i mean i, I won't disagree with that um yeah i i won't disagree <laughs> <laughs> i won't disagree with that i mean because there's still people out here even now saying you know that it's not important to vote like your vote doesn't count and we're seeing how all these votes for the people that did is counting yep. because their guy is in office and he's making all these changes, ruining people's lives on a daily basis. Uh, so something counted. I, well, even here, um, I posted something else today. ABC News did a poll and Obama, they, well, over several polls. And Obama ranks the best president of all time or the second best president of all time 60% of the time. So it's like y'all can come out and do these polls, but you can't take your butt to the poll poll. <laughs> well, this one is convenient. Well, I guess, yeah, this one's convenient because you don't have to leave your house, you know. You just click a button on the computer. Uh, you don't really, you got to go to work Tuesday, either on your way to work or on your way home. Just stop by the little polling office and come on back on. Come on in. But then you could also do it early and you can do it by mail. Like they try to make it, you know, easy for you. Well, some states you can. Some, My well, state you can. You what? can. You can't you can, vote early? You can vote early only if you are not going to be in town and you have to prove that you won't uh, be in town or if you are in the military. So it's like an absentee ballot yeah, type situation. Absent, yeah. Okay. You can't just vote early and you can't vote by mail in unless Missouri? you're in one of those situations. Okay. Well, thankfully we don't have that issue. But I mean, even if you didn't, the poll is a few blocks away, nine times out of 10. It's usually within five minutes. I mean, granted, there are some rural areas that you may have to go a little further out in, you know. But for city livers, what do you think it's, it's going right to take? There. What do you think it's going to take for black people to vote? Not just black people for that hundred and eight million people to actually get fired up enough to to go and vote this time to do something this time. You know, I don't know. I'm sure some of these people are the same people that we see complaining on social media, mm -hmm. the same people we see out even protesting at times against some of the stuff that he's doing, you know, ruining education, ruining the EPA, ruining everything. Maybe they need you know, to give taking away, away all of these uh, protections uh, from people that are that benefit all of us. Maybe taking away protections vote, that get... benefit all of us. Taking away protections of your water, taking away protections of the air. Maybe and you okay? Give gas <laughs> you cars. okay with that? If you come vote, you get a gas car. Instead of an I voted sticker, you get a gas car. Twenty five dollar gas car. Twenty five. Yeah, uh, yeah, that may get people out. Or twenty five dollar Walmart card. Mm. I say some free government cheese, but I don't know how many people are gonna come out for that. Right. <laughs> I don't know. It just it, I, I it don't know. it's it, upsetting it's, at times. It's really it's not just upsetting. It's sad and it's scary. How many people don't get it? And I th I think honestly education it has to start with education we've got to start educating ourselves and we got to start educating our children because it's so many of us black and when i say us i mean black people yeah, um, that don't understand politics because think about it when we were coming up we didn't talk about politics because our parents didn't talk about politics they didn't really understand politics and then their parents prior to them wasn't involved in politics you know 
uh, and right before that, they were slaves. So it, it, we're not that far removed from slavery anyway. So I get the lack of understanding, but we are now at a point where it's no longer an excuse. Right. We have the resources to do it. And honestly, you you can Google anything. It's a YouTube video out there that is going to explain to you about how the government works. I mean, type in YouTube, how does the government work? I guarantee you thousands of videos will pop up. It's you know it's it's funny that I mean I was just talking about how the this administration is removing all these protections or whatever and basically making us idiots. But when you talk about how you need to educate your children, that actually goes into the story I wanted to talk to you about regarding Michigan, because uh, I was I came across a story I think it was Atlanta Black Star uh, was the first uh, place I saw it. But they were talking about these students that were in high school suing the government because they. I mean, they're going through high school. I don't even know if they graduated. Maybe they did. They, they didn't. But they can't read. It's like the they're not giving them. They're not teaching them. And so they, they graduate in high school because, and, and can't read. read. Like they they're they're not actually learning. And they said this is actually what's going on in a lot of the school systems. And I guess this was uh did I say it was Michigan? I don't know if it was actually Detroit, but it was in Michigan. I may have got Detroit from your story oh, okay. uh, when we were talking earlier. But I know it was in Michigan. But uh, they were. Uh, uh, the lawsuit was saying how the it does say Detroit schools. So it's, it's run under a state appointed emergency man- manager. And they were talking about how dysfunctional it is. They said they got overcrowded classrooms, lack of textbooks and ba- basic materials, unqualified staff, leaking roofs, broken windows, black mold, contaminated drinking water, no pens, no papers, no toilet paper. And it said at times uh, without teachers. Or instructional materials. They just h- herd these students into the classrooms to, and they watch videos because they don't have a teacher to teach the class. Okay, so before you go any further, how is it that you as a parent can't realize your 16-year-old don't know how to read? Not even just that. The fact that, um, well, I'm hoping that once this information became public, you as a parent took it upon yourself to tr- to teach your child. You should have been involved way before it got to the lawsuit level. You, they should have been way before, involved way before their child hit 16. To know that The moment <laughs> you realize your four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old, by the time your child is six years old, your child should know how to read. I didn't know how to read at six. My mama could not figure out why she couldn't get me to understand she met my first grade teacher and I really wish I could remember the lady's name. My mama remembers her name, but I don't, I remember her. I just don't remember her name. She taught me how to read. The minute I walked in that lady's room, that lady said she will know how to read when she leaves my class. She's the one who taught me how to read. The best gift I was ever given is the ability to be able to read. How is it that, and my mom knew there was a problem. It's just at that time, she wasn't a teacher. She didn't know how to teach me. But my, she found a teacher that did. Mm-hmm. My little sister had a lisp when she was little. She couldn't figure out what was going on. She just knew something wasn't right with her mouth. And her mouth wasn't making the, the sounds. Like she was, she couldn't say j- J's. So she would say shimmy instead of Jimmy. Oh. Choice instead of Joyce. You know, she couldn't say them. And so she took her to a speech therapist. She knew something was wrong with her. Let's get it fixed. Speech therapist wasn't figuring it out. And that's when, by that time, my mom was teaching. And she started looking at her when she talked. And she re- realized my little sister was would not raise her tongue. So she literally would open her mouth and, and hold her tongue in positions and tell her to say words. Oh, okay. And until she figured it out. And now my nephew, my youngest nephew, he has a speech impediment too, or had one. Um, He started speaking slowly. My mom again realized there was a problem. She didn't take as much time as she did with my little sister, but she got him into speech therapy. Now he won't shut up. (laughs) (laughs) But there's something to be thankful about. Right. But see, she noticed these things when they were little, when I was little, not 16. Yeah. 14, 15, 16. Yes. By the time your child is six years old, they should know how to read. If they don't know how to read, there's something wrong. And that doesn't mean it's something wrong with your kid. There's something wrong somewhere. Yes, and you need need to find out whether it's in the school system. But, like, okay, do you blame the school or do you blame the parents? Both. Yeah, I think they both uh, have some onus in this this situation. But this all uh, brought up the conversation of whether students actually have the right to uh, an education. And th- this is the story where they said they didn't. Yes. And so the judge, uh, well, the, uh, the state was like, you know, dismi- they wanted to dismiss the charges or whatever. 
the charges, dismiss the suit, mm -hmm. because they were like, you know, the fact that there's a building there, you know, the school, and students have access to the building. We give you access to an education, but that doesn't speak to the quality of the education, especially when they uh, don't have teachers, don't have textbooks, but the building is there. We're still watching the kids. We're babysitters. And I feel like at this point, especially, you know, these are in low income areas. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you have a secretary of the Department of Education who's uh, really trying to push for private schools versus any funding mm -hmm. for public schools, and you got uh, what we saw all those teachers protesting in all those different cities and states mm -hmm. just for a fair wage because they lack textbooks, they have to buy supplies on their own. Yep. Like how did like how did we get <laughs> how did we get here? I don't you know and everybody keeps saying this is not America. The bad thing about it is this because this doesn't America. sound like a this year problem no, or a, a problem a, that stemmed yeah, from Trump's a, administration. And that's it. It shouldn't. Well, this is definitely not a a brand new problem. This is America. And until we all realize that what we have in common is not the color of our skin, but the amount in our bank accounts, when we start realizing that. That class is defined not by your, the, your skin color, but by how much money you make and how much money you are earning. Then you will actually start to get who you need to be in line with, who has your actual best interest at heart. And I'm sorry, it ain't a politician out there that got my best interest in art at heart no they all are in it for the money every last one of them because they making money they getting free health care they getting free security free everything because we paying for it and then they're making money by lobbying and getting paid under the table and mm -hmm. all kind of other stuff right so I, I, and this ain't a democratic or a republican problem this is just a politician problem. Yeah, a political problem yeah and back in the back in slavery time in order to get the people to go along with slavery Somebody out there told them, look, you might not have nothing. You might be dirt poor. You might have to get your water from a well. You might not have a house. You might not be able to afford shoes. You probably go to school with the little dirty kids and all you ever going to be is a little dirty adult. But at least you're not black. At least you are not of color. At least you're not Japanese. At least you're not Irish. At least you're not. That's how they made white people feel so much, feel any kind of superiority. Yeah. And they were okay with that because they would say, okay, I don't have nothing, but at least I'm not black. And now all of these black people, all of these Asian people, all these Japanese people, Mexican people are, are busting their butt. To get an education, taking that education and making something of themselves. And then they come across the black man that got a little something and they can't say, well, at least I'm not black anymore. And it turns into rage and anger. Right. And what we have is a school system created by rich men who don't care about your color. Because I guarantee you it's some white kids that don't know how to read from that school district. It was some white kids in yeah, that if they don't, if they can't afford to go to the private schools where they, they get the education, school. they're in the school system. So they didn't care about the color of your skin. They didn't care about your child. They didn't care about you. They didn't think you were better because you were white. They could have gave a crap less. This is what they gave you. So it's the government's fault. It's the people's fault for allowing the government to control it. It's black people's fault for being stuck in the mentality that we got to fight each other in order to survive. It's white people's fault for f feeling like, oh, my God, I, I might not have crap, but at least I'm better than you are. And it's the parents' fault for not realizing, hey, my kid can't read. And at I a, need to a, do yeah, something about this. Earlier age. I said this last week. I'll say it again. Nobody's going to fix this but us. Nobody's going to fix our problems but us. We got to find a way to stop fighting and come together and start building. Um, you had me watch um, a video of a young woman who was asked the question of why she married for money. Um, at the end of that video, she, she she explained why she married for money. Not the, And she explains that she, it wasn't that she didn't love her husband. She loves her husband her husband but she didn't marry oh, her why husband. she didn't marry for love right but at one point okay. she says why i didn't marry why i married for money okay but uh oh maybe it, maybe it was love yeah why she didn't like it was almost like love didn't have anything to do with it even though she did right. love him yeah, that wasn't the said, determining that, factor and she t says that's not why i married my husband i married my husband because she, she well she says marriage is about building 
It is not about love. It is about building. That is what the institution is. And she's right. That's what it is. It's about building. It's about building love within each other and trust within each other. But it's also about building a family, right. about building a network, about building a community, right. about building together. And that's what it's all about. We got to start building together. If we don't continue to build our own people up, we're getting ready to be. You think we can't be extinct? Yes, we can. Yep. We can. It can happen again. You think we can't go back to slavery, honey? We 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 a stroke of a pen away from it. If we don't start doing something now, we are going to be in a world of hurt later. And the first thing we have to do is get rid of that brainwash mentality that we don't count. We'll never count. They don't care. Yeah, they don't care. But guess what? I care. I care about me. I care about my people. I care about other people that ain't my people. Right. You know, I care. We need to start coming together. Everything's a fight. My Grandma Susie can't whip little Joey's ass, even though little Joey then came up on her house, threw eggs at her house, TP'd her, her garage. But she can't do nothing about it because Susie down on the corner, her mama going to get an attitude. People showing up at the school and rollers and house they house clothes talking about <laughs> why you wake me up out of bed. Well, just because they got the rollers and they ain't got nothing to do with it. No, it's the I fact said that you talking <laughs> about why you wake me up out of bed. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think we need to really look at this thing and not really, uh, I guess, try and put all of the blame on the school system. It's not because you don't know what these even if they did have quality teachers you don't know what they're they're teaching your kids because it seems like a lot of these parents are just the kids are going to school and they're not like checking up on them if your kid if your kid don't have a parent teachers conference every quarter it's a problem find out why if the school don't don't do parent teachers conference make your own call the teacher and say i'm coming to see you yeah i, I need, need to, to know, have a you know what's going what on what is your hour off because i'm coming in to see you what show what they call it the t all teachers get one hour to Set up their lesson plan. Like the planning is, oh, yeah, I don't know what it's going on. What's that hour? Because mm -hmm. I'm coming to see you. I need to know what's going on with my child. When you, them report cards come in, look at them report cards. Read them. Find out why Johnny's making a D in gym. Uh, or find out why you ain't getting the report card. There <laughs> you find, go. Find out why you got red marker here making it look like the grade has changed or something. Find out what's going on. What's going on. I mean, one of the uh, students even said, uh, they watch Frozen so much in class. I think she was an eighth grader. She knew all the words to the movie. Like you're in school just watching Disney videos. And not this doesn't and make that's any the sense. the other thing. When your kid comes home from school, what did you learn today? Yeah. Parent, we need to be more, well, parents need to be more involved. Uh, especially now. Because you can't really expect anybody to do anything for yours because they don't care. And they, they don't have to care, to be quite honest. These are your children. Make, and you need to be in charge of of their progress they trying to make us think that we might we immigrated for better jobs you better find out what's going on in that school because they gonna have you they gonna have you thinking that that every, every black man was the devil again it's reteaching and re, they're reteaching everything and they can take us right back to where we were if we stupid enough to let them that's all i'm saying right on so anywho on to something better so you know bill cosby had a birthday oh did he Mm -hmm. okay. He threw a rager. What does that mean? What is uh, you rage party? A rager? Loud party? Oh. Really? You Nobody says that. So I, <laughs> a rager. Okay, nope. Maybe I'm old, but anywho. Uh, mm, so I, didn't see it, I didn't see it this time. Shut up. So it's Cosby. Anyway, so he threw this huge loud party. party. Okay. Um, I don't know how many guests were in attendance. We're thinking about one. Well, um, his wife? No, him. Oh, <laughs> um, it started at 7 a.m. And the music that he was bumping was jazz. The neighbors called the cops. The police that surrounded his house. Who? Bill Cosby? <laughs> yes. The old man? This yeah. only, is this a fake story? No, this is real. Well, it's TMZ, so. Okay. But, but I'm pretty sure it's real. Threw a big party and yeah. Police were called, came out to his house, surrounded his house. And told him he had to turn down the music. Okay. At seven something in the morning. Yeah, what was he? I mean, I guess, He's you know, old, older people. But older people, they do, you know, get up really early, like before, before the sun. Right. He had probably been up since but 5 a.m., bored, and was ready to celebrate his birthday. And he got his party on starting at seven o'clock in the morning. 
He figured everybody was either uh, was up on their way to work. Okay. This is weird. <laughs> Everything about the story was weird. <laughs> and then the, for the police to show up like that, they could have sent security guards to go and knock on this Surrounded man's door and say, you know, maybe they thought something was actually going on because who I, does that? They, Seven o'clock in the morning. Maybe he was, uh, they turn up the music in order to uh, cover up his screams because they in there beating him and trying to get his money or something like that. Maybe that's what they thought. If I remember correctly, they said guns drawn. I'm trying to see, but maybe not. This, let's see. According to dispatch audio, the original caller said the music had been playing since 7 a.m. Oh, no, that's not it. So, no, they didn't say um, anything. About, they just surrounded his house. Okay. I'm hoping that they were concerned for his safety versus going and to. He turned 81. I, I don't know. I hope they were too because they sur- cops surrounded his house. <laughs> that's stupid. All for some jazz music. And you, you've been hearing, you know, more and more people calling the police on black folks for being black. Hey, we got, we got, what's, we, we, pool patrol, par, Paula, we got, um, uh, we got so many of them. I don't even remember all the names <laughs> no more. It's some um, barbecue Becky, um, wake up Susie. That's what they called the very first one that we started talking about. Permit, Patty, ID, Adam. I'm like, really? Oh, yeah. These I saw a, a clip today of adam on some doing some interview or whatever acting like he's so apologetic i you know i would never want to make someone feel that way i'm like you didn't have that attitude the same attitude you had at the pool please don't. He, i was disgusted here's my thing don't don't, don't apologize if you say it don't apologize he, you know he didn't the, mean it just the backlash because i think he got fired the papa so, john's the backlash. guy the papa john's guy he apologized uh, don't apologize that, to me I, <laughs> you that, know papa john's is my that's my spot uh, it's gone now. It better I, be. No, it is. No, as it will be as soon as my gone. free piece. Because I got about eight free pieces stacked up. So once I use those, um, I'm I'm over it. I'm done. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, he he gives an apology. Apologize, dude. You talked about black men being dragged dragged over under, uh, across the ground with tr- um on trucks. No, I don't care about your po- apology because mm-hmm. your apology is BS. You don't mean it. Don't bother. And that's where I am. If you said it, if you did it, you meant it. Don't even bother to apologize. Just get the hell away from me. All right. I don't want to have nothing to do with you. I'm telling you, y- y'all better be careful. Y'all going to let y'all president get y'all's ass kicked. I'm, that's, and that's not a joke. Somebody is going to beat somebody's butt. Guaranteed. Some and woman you know what, today. It's so amazing to me that we see all these uh, racist people confronting normal citizens and they're not getting i don't know how these, these people, people are being, are being calm. Uh, restri- showing so much restraint because i'm i just know i would fly off the handle i was standing in front of an um of an item in the store today and i mean literally there was barely enough mo- uh, enough space for somebody to walk in front of me but i'm standing there and i'm looking at glasses and i was looking and this white woman just comes walks in front of me and literally stops directly in front of me picks up a glass and shows it to her husband this one's nice and heavy and her husband just looked at my face because i wanted to knock the crap out of her but i said i'm out here with these white people in this white people world let me get my butt home to my black world excuse me and i said it that way she moved she just moved over she didn't apologize nothing i grabbed the glass put it back down and walked away i'm like and the whole time i'm just cussing her out in my mind out I, I, I wanted to go off it was just rude yeah why didn't you for go no off? reason because i'm out here in this area with these white people okay. they'll call the police and i'll be the one in jail yeah so she's cussing and she's acting bel- I know. belligerent I, and all that. And, and then they, and th- she starts crying when the police gets there and playing. She scared me. Yeah, get your I know. Ass out my way. I know the game. We know the game. They know the game. That's so, why they keep using it. That's and why, one, and that's one, why one of the things doing. that frustrates me though is I feel like police should do more. Police di- dispatch should do more with screening these type of phone calls because when the police show up for nonsense like this it makes them look bad as well and they're not well sometimes they do but most of the time they don't check the person that made the phone call that's that's it i don't think now, they if we saw more screen. of that i think that would kind of change how people view police i don't think they should screen i think when they come out for a, a call like that and it's uh, i'm calling because she's she's barbecue he's barbecuing in the wrong place they come on out okay you the one we arresting and you, i'm we arresting oh, yeah, that'll, you for, that'll slow it for, down too for um what, what is it a false police 
report filing well, a it's wasting their time basically wasting taxpayers money and now that's what i would tell her you you're the one getting arrested because this is a waste of taxpayer dollars this is a waste of, it's we got to make the money back somehow so now you got to pay court costs yeah that's exactly what i would do i think if police would start doing that it would change things but you saw the woman the mexican or the puerto rican woman who had her i love puerto rico sh- or puerto, puerto rico shirt, shirt yeah. and it was american flag and all that on the fourth of july and he's screaming in her all of that, that guy was all in her face yeah and the security or police whoever he was supposed to be jack just back and there she's chilling. calmly saying, Man, dude, stay away from me. At this point, this is now this is confrontational because yeah. he was too close to her. And wasn't she even trying to get the and officer engaged? Yeah, like, she was hey, trying are to you, engage you the see, officer. You know, are you going to do something too about close. this? Are you going to do something? Finally, a, a male that was with her had to step in and he had to push push this old guy away. Now, luckily, they did arrest him and they uh, I think he's he's been charged with some kind of harassment crime but um it's just it won't stop i heard that officer uh or security guard quit yeah he quit probably because he was about to get in trouble Mm -hmm. but um it was so blatant that he didn't give a shit he didn't care (laughs) it was so but so nonchalant in the background when the other dude when the other guy who was with her started getting up in the white dude's face then the cop got engaged Mm. and so of course um honestly i think that they should start arresting them people immediately on the spot, bringing them on in, taking them into filing the paperwork, doing all of it and ju- treating them like that. And it'll stop. Right. But until the cops start seeing it as an issue, as a real issue, instead of an issue that Colin Kaepernick created, then we gonna continue to have this crap. So you want money, right? <laughs> You want money? I want money. Yeah, I think we all want money. Do you know who the youngest billionaire is about to be? Yes. Kylie Jenner. Yeah, I heard. So there has been this big debate over TV, over the news, over social media, over Twitter. Forbes is calling Kylie Jenner the youngest self-made billionaire of all time. Oh, they called her self-made yes okay that's where the problem is so there's been this debate is she self-made what is self-made self-made is to make of oneself yeah i feel like when you start with everything with your own when you start when you come from money can you be self-made well that was the question when you come from money can you be self-made so the argument is the argument of yes is yeah, you can be self-made because just because you have an opportunity doesn't necessarily mean you can actually make that opportunity work. Millions of people have been given millions of dollars, Agent Orange, in fact, mm-hmm. and a small loan of a million dollars and lost that money and couldn't make it work for them. So the fact that even though she was the doors were open for her, she still had to make something of it. I don't, but still self-made and you got a machine behind you that's the problem okay see i i, I get the argument that um uh, somebody said uh and everybody doesn't everybody get help from somebody doesn't everybody have a door open for them at some point in time and i guess if you think about it yeah my mom opened doors for me when she um ex- um she expressed the importance of an education because it's my education that has opened doors for me um my sisters have opened doors for me just because of the But did net- your mom pay your student well, loans no, no, or give on, you the okay. Let me finish. My <laughs> sisters have opened doors for me because of the networking yes. that they have done and I've walked through doors behind them. Yes. My little brother has done the same thing with his networking and opened doors for me and vice versa. So um yes, I I think everybody has somebody who does something because a door is even opened up for you when you have somebody who pushes back against you because it teaches you to be to, to be stronger to try yeah, resilient to yeah. be resilient and continue to keep going so and it can make you or break you right um but self-made when it's one thing to have the door open for you when you knock it's another thing for the door to be already open right and you just walk through it. yes and that's what i feel like this situation is well, and not only that, you know, I can say because a lot, I mean, the, the debate is still there. And I'm like, okay, it, I can understand where y'all coming from. I think it's just the definition of self-made that everybody's having a problem with. Yep. But here's where I don't, where, here's where I say 
she loses the battle because no matter what you buy no matter what you buy into no matter how you make your money you make your money off of a brand walmart is a brand um people go to walmart because they know walmart it's not just about knowing you're going to get good prices when you get in there it's about also knowing hey when i walk into walmart i'm gonna be able to find just about everything under the sun people go to amazon hey i can get free shipping i pay so much a month or so much a year i get my free shipping the stuff comes within a couple of days amazon usually takes care of my problems they they've built a brand over time um when you listen to your favorite musician you know what it's going to be about because they built that brand over time kylie jenner did not build her brand kylie jenner did go out and she met up with two um kids who used to uh, or who was raised in the cosmetic business and they came and she had an idea and they brainstormed on this 29 dollar lip kit she sells Granted, okay, she did that. She was part of that. Um, somebody gave her money because she did this when she was 16 years old, 16, mm-hmm. 17 years old. Somebody gave her money. She didn't have that kind of money at that age, not on her own. But okay, so fine. Somebody gave her money. That's just somebody opening a door for her. If you want to say this, that she's still self-made because of all of that, that's fine. But what that brand, Kylie Jenner did not build her brand. Her sisters built her brand. Right. To be quite honest, Kim Kardashian built her brand when Kim Kardashian laid on her back for everybody. She's built the family brand. She built everybody's (laughs) brand. Yeah. And Kris Jenner made that brand into what it is today. Right. So She's, she's the machine. Had Kylie Jenner not put her name on that, had she done that same cosmetic kick, but did it under one of her partner's names, she would not be at the billionaire mark today. Right. It would so that's where I say there's a difference. Uh, yeah, I can hear I can hear the different arguments because everybody's going back and forth with it. But when it comes to that brand, she had nothing to do with that brand. That brand was created when she was ten years old. She had nothing to do with it. She probably didn't know what a brand was. And if you want to go back even further, it was created before that when Bruce Jenner was on the Wheaties box. Yeah. So if you are rich and famous and your kid comes up and uses your name, they're they're bouncing off of your brand. No, they are not self-made because they are using your brand. If your kid goes off, changes their name, does something by themselves, and then yes, boom, that, it blows that's up, different. they yeah, are that's self-made. That's self-made, yeah. So I think... And it has nothing really to do with the struggle because, right. I mean, she didn't necessarily probably have to struggle or anything like that, but... Uh, the resilience when she faced like obstacles, but I can't even see her facing any obstacles because well, the doors, I the door was open. I can because you know, sometimes when you come from somebody who's done something, people expect more of you. Possibly. Yeah. Um, they expect you to be better than everybody else. And you might not be. I remember but, but on the flip side though, people don't expect anything. Well, no, well, no, not necessarily. See, I remember they'll just accept whatever because the name, Right. They, so, well, but some, uh, but a lot of people expect, especially people in that industry. And that's, yeah. The sex I, industry my, or the cosmetics industry? <laughs> entertainment. I'm entertainment, saying entertainment. Okay. <laughs> sex industry. But um, I, I remember when I was little and my mom was a teacher and I was in school with my mom. Teachers expected A's out of me. They expected A's out of me in subjects I was not good at. Just because Your mom was a my teacher. mom was a teacher. That makes sense. And it, it was always, I was Miss So-and-So's daughter. I was So-and-So's little sister. Oh, so this is So-and-So. I, I never had my own I, name. <laughs> I didn't have my own identity until I was a junior in high school, and it went away the next year because my little brother came in a, in, into my school. And then I became his big sister. <laughs> like, really, y'all? Are you kidding me? I don't exist. So it it makes it can it can sometimes make it harder because the either so much is expected of you or so nothing little. is expected yeah. of you at all. So it does. I'm not saying it is easy by any means. It doesn't necessarily make it easier, but self made is still self made. It is made of oneself, not made of oneself in after all the work my mama and daddy did twenty years ago. Uh, but not to say uh, she's lazy or anything, mm-hmm. because I think I she's know. still out here hustling. Her, uh, what's her uh, other sister's name? I don't know. Okay, I barely know her name. Oh, <laughs> it's uh, Ky- it's Kendall. Okay, because I remember uh, they had some controversy because they were putting out some T-shirts that had like Biggie 
on it and Tupac's face on it. And they were <laughs> they were selling it without clearing it with anybody. Oh uh, and I'm, I'm sure they made <laughs> so some they money. Didn't know no better. <laughs> Uh, but I, to me, that speaks to them, you know, hustling, yeah, you know, trying to do whatever to do and then using, using that name and using in it. order to, and you that know, to me push. is smart because it's yeah, a lot smart. of kids that don't realize, wait a minute, my name is a brand and I can't like that kid that says, uh, uh-uh, I want to do it all by myself and I'm not going to have my mama's name attached. I think that kid is crazy because they're making it harder for themselves, yeah, but then that may themselves. be, uh, but, how they appreciate it. Right. More. And that might be and maybe then, how they you know, work harder for, own, you know. To each his own, but they are working that brand. I'm not saying that they don't work hard, and not at all. But then the other portion of the story is that they somebody says she was um she made her money from black appropriation. I can see that too. I, I don't. I, I just don't understand it. Why? Uh, the, why? Because she had big lips. She had. In, she don't have in, big injections. lips. She had injections but, to uh try to mimic black people. Okay, I feel like everything they do is based off black culture. The whole family. Okay, okay. So even if she had injections because she wanted big lips and she like having big lips, whatever. Yeah. What black does that have to own, do with her lip kit? Oh, uh, now that I don't understand. Okay, that's what but I'm saying. Saying, That's where uh, the, they're okay. saying she appropriated because they're this this article Forbes doesn't mention. But okay, you get lip b- injections and you're pu- you're pushing this lip kit, and so people may, may subconsciously way think before uh, she started. It, I would hope lip so, kit. but. People would probably associate if I use this lip kit, then I'll have lips like Kylie Jenner. Really? Yeah. Have you? You almost don't know their fan, their her fan base. It's like little teeny boppers. Okay, teeny boppers. That don't happen. Uh, I, I'm trying. So you're to, you're I mean, out of the game. Yeah, I'm way out of that game because yeah. that just because you know just because I wear go get uh Janet Jackson. You don't remember outfit, when people? Don't mean I'm have Jackson Jackson body. You don't remember when people were going and uh, putting their lips inside jars and then sucking? Yeah, but I thought that was like a challenge. It, it, Kylie Jenner challenge. Oh, <laughs> it was wow. people trying to be like her. Wow. Okay. Teeny boppers. Okay. Well, and some adults because people just follow whatever. Okay. I guess. I need y'all to be a little bit more. Um, but, you know, whatever. If it's not harming, you know, it was. It is harmful. Well, that 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 challenge, <laughs> yes. <laughs> harmful. But I'm saying, you know, just uh, following her, buying her lip kit, supporting her, whatever but, she's but doing. But she this. made all. They're basing her money based off of only this lip kit, and that's why I was like, I don't get the appropriation just oh, okay. because she had lip injections. So what? People put in fake butts too. Like a sister. And she's making money off that age. Uh, yeah, like a sister and like a whole <laughs> lot of black girls. <laughs> Nicki Minaj wasn't born that way. She wasn't. So I just I don't. But know. the booty belongs to black women, and, and that might be true. I'm not. I'm not gonna deny that. I didn't get that. I think I, I went after my took after my white grandma there. <laughs> uh, but, uh, <laughs> but I think it, it frustrates, uh, especially black women. It frustrates them when you get uh, people that are not black that imitate black people and get credit for it. Like when you see the uh, K- uh, Kim Kardashian and her sisters rocking the braids to the back. Then all of a sudden, this is new trend that, you know, the different magazines, E! News and all these people are talking about when we've been doing it for forever. I think that's it's the credit. Maybe if they start putting if those people would start putting credit where credit belongs, things might be that might be a little different. Um, And then maybe a little money where it belongs, because I think that becomes that's it becomes a sensitivity subject. And the reality is when black people have been mistreated in this country for so long and you know, told that we can't come to work with our hair like that. Now, all of a sudden, it's a trend and a white girl can do it. And not only can she do it, she's making money off of yeah. it. This is a problem. And I think that becomes, that's a sensitivity thing. And yeah, uh, uh, I can kind of understand appropriation to some point. But I, I think, like I said before, you have to understand appropriation and appreciation. Appropriation is when you are making money to for, for, uh, from it appreciation is when you just rocking the style and you're not really making money from it so i mean i want people of all cultures to, to appreciate, appreciate ours ours yeah. just like i appreciate i mean there's some beautiful things in indian weddings um after seeing joe and sweater's wedding uh, there's just some beautiful things within their weddings i would love to do you know but I would hope it would be seen as appreciation and not appropriation. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I think there is a difference. And I feel and like if you started selling that th- idea, that becomes then appropriation. It, yes. Once you start making money off of it, it becomes appropriation. So uh, Kim Kardashian and her butt, that's appropriation because she made money off her butt. She literally <laughs> made money <laughs> off her butt. <laughs> so that is, that is appropriation. I don't, 
think Kylie Jenner made, I think she did the lip injections long before it. I don't think she made money off her lips. Now, if you see her lips in a co- in a commercial cooling soup or something, you, you know, big lips, soup they used cooler. to call them soup coolers. Okay. Yeah, if you saw that, then you would say, okay, that's appropriation. I think she just had big, she wanted big lips because, hey, they look good. They sexy. They hot. Well, I just I feel like you don't follow them enough to p- participate in that particular conversation. And maybe okay, so maybe she did <laughs> do something where, and that's why I said well, maybe because I, I feel like people have the people that are angry about her and uh, calling it cultural appropriation. I feel like they have valid reasons for. It. Oh, okay. And so I don't want to dismiss the, <laughs> their feelings. Oh, you know? I, I, well, I don't want to dismiss their feelings. I just want I want to make sure it's you're calling appropriation, appropriation, and appreciation, appreciation. Yeah. Now, if she was appropriating, you're right. I don't follow her. Right. I just saw this. I just saw this self-made thing. It was like, okay, let me find out because I'm having a problem with this. And I wonder why now. the uh, the headline or the article, whoever wrote it, chose to use self-made that word. Uh, no, well, I'm, I'm sure they Forbes. knew it would be controversial. I don't know. This is Forbes. You know, Forbes always prints out these. They talk about where people are, how much money they made this year, who's in the but, top but twenty. That top one phrase, I, self-made. I, that's I a think good they question. knew it would cause a, a stir. Because of the Kardashian, the Jenner name. And they may have, and how because people, yeah. it's, it will sell magazines. I mean, think about it. Everybody's talking about it now. We're we're talking about it. you talking about it, and you're forcing me well, to talk about it. No. Uh, and I'm only talking about it because literally all throughout my Facebook streams, my Twitter streams, on my TV, every, it's like, what the heck? I had to understand. My first question was, well, is she self-made? So I went to look for where the money came from, first of all, to buy the company. Was it her money? Did she go out and get a loan from somebody? Did she get it from my mama and daddy? Now, I know she get it logically from where she probably got it from, but I still wanted to make sure. And then I found out, hey, she got a partner. I didn't know she had a partner in her lip kit. Hell, I didn't even know what the lip kit was. That ought to tell you <laughs> something. I was like, what the hell is in a lip kit? <laughs> So I didn't know what any of this was until literally uh, literally seven hours ago. Right on. I I started looking it up. I was like, okay, let me. And the more I got into it, the question of self-made. I thought that was an interesting topic. Right on. You're no fun. We have to get Mike to join us in the girly talk. Mm, This is probably the extent of it right here. (laughs) The girly talk. (laughs) You got anything else? For I do not. You got enough of the girly talk. I do. Oh, I'm, I'm over it. I'm so gonna take you. I'm ready for a drink now. I'm gonna take you down through some girl something, somewhere, somehow. What are you talking about? Some the girl, feminine product aisle or something? No, you might just be like, Okay, can we go? <laughs> I just wouldn't pay attention. I wanna take you to a place you've never been before. What is this? Now you got to elaborate. What What are you talking about? I, I'm, I'm gonna take you to a girl place, you a conversation, a something. But you know, I'm I'm probably before. the best person. I totally know how not to participate <laughs> in the conversation. I'm good at it. You should know that. I'm gonna take you. We gonna do something. We'll figure it out. Hey, don't do it on the show because this is gonna be a so low conversation. <laughs> I'm just I'm letting you know ahead of time. Maybe I just surround you by women. Okay. And we'll talk about the most embarrassing moments of our lives. You, you see this church finger right here? I know how to put it up <laughs> and excuse myself. Uh-oh, we going to surround you and lock you in the circle. Uh, you trying to make me die? Yes, and talk about our first periods. Okay. And on that note, <laughs> <laughs> that's the show for tonight. Make, make sure you guys are watching the Facebook. Subscribe to the Facebook. If you're coming by this show, on YouTube by happenstance, make sure you click subscribe. We talk about a plethora of things, usually politics, because that's what novelty loves oh, to talk about. Oh, don't blame it on me. Uh, it's usually politics because we got a because it's orange <laughs> devil in the White House. The rest of the world is inundated with political talk. The devil the is in the White I've House, The most I've ever y'all. seen, period. The devil's in the White House. He the right color and all. Revelations, what they say? The devil was going to walk the earth. He's here. Make sure you guys subscribe. We appreciate you guys for listening. Thank you so, so much. And until next time, peace. And prayers. Lots and lots of prayers. Good night.